Ugetsu is a 1953 Japanese classic by the director Kenji Mizuguchi produced by Day Film Studios. Day Film Studios was founded in 1942 as Dai Nippon Film Company. It was one of the major studios during Japan's post-war golden age of cinema, producing a myriad of films such as Akira Kurosawa's 1950 Rashomon and the three Dimajin films. Kenji Mizuguchi started in the film industry at a production company called Nakatsu, where he was an actor who specialized in portraying female characters. Later on, he began assistant directing and released his own debut film, The Resurrection of Love, in 1923. Over the span of his career, Mizuguchi directed nearly 90 films, however, only his last 12 were widely known outside of Japan. Of all his films, Princess Yang Kuefei and Taira Khan Sage, both shot in 1955, were the only ones filmed in color. Most of Mizuguchi's work is known for its mise-en-scene and long takes that are heavily featured in Ugetsu. Ugetsu's release brought Mizuguchi international attention and was featured in the Sight and Sound Critics Top 10 poll by Kinema Junpo, Japan's oldest film magazine, in 1962 and 1972. Ugetsu was well-received in many Western cultures as well and was even nominated for the Best Costume Design Oscar in 1956. Other critically acclaimed movies directed by Mizuguchi include The Story of the Last Chrysanthemums, 1939, the Life of Oharu, 1952, Sancho the Bailiff, 1954, and The Crucified Lovers, also 1954. Mizuguchi is often cited today as one of the most acclaimed filmmakers of his generation, not only in Japan, but globally. Within Mizuguchi's Ugetsu, we see the ambitious tale of two men as they leave their village in pursuit of fortune and status. We see this progression as Tobei and Gunjiro begin the film as humble villagers who make their living from pottery. Once they return with immense gold from selling their pots in a neighboring city, Tobei is consumed with the goal of becoming a samurai, while Genjiro is focused on becoming a wealthy man to support his family. Evident as a main theme throughout the entirety of the film, greed takes over the mindsets of these two men and puts their lives and familial relationships at risk of destruction. During what is perhaps the most famous of scenes in the film, and certainly the most visually stunning, the men and their wives travel across a lake in search of prosperity after their village is raided. Despite a warning of danger from a dying man, they float past. The men travel onward, leaving Genjiro's wife and son behind. The men are initially successful in their endeavors to get money, but things take a turn when Tobei's desire to become a samurai transforms into an obsession. He abandons his wife and Genjiro to pursue this dream, just as Genjiro is seduced by Lady Wasaka, the ghost of this tale. In the end, the two men sacrifice their values for the temporary satisfaction of wealth and power. Ugetsu takes place in 16th century Japan. During this tumultuous time, Japanese society was in constant upheaval due to excessive military conflict. This element of Japanese history is evident within the film through Mizuguchi's attention to detail with the props and scenery. The scenes properly depict the chaos and horror of war-torn Japan. It is also said that Mizuguchi took inspiration from his own childhood when creating the characters as his father was a greedy man who was willing to sacrifice nearly anything for money. Despite the fantastical elements Ugetsu is known for, Mizuguchi strays away from the traditional Western portrayal of the supernatural. The depiction of ghosts is not intended to startle audience members, but rather to symbolize the real-life hardships of war and poverty. Another widely praised component of Ugetsu is its musical score, created by renowned Japanese composer Hayasaka. The film's musical composition creates eerie tension within scenes and influences the tone of the imagery it accompanies. Hayasaka utilizes a wide variety of musical styles to create this effect, spanning from traditional Japanese instrumentals to more westernized music, all while focusing on what is referred to as romantic yogaku, which can most accurately be translated to an impressionistic mode used to emulate haunting of dreamlike states. These traits collectively contribute to Mizuguchi's style being characterized as hogaku, traditional, rather than yogaku, westernized. This particular scene encapsulates the most recognizable characteristics of Mizuguchi's work, such as his use of long takes and mise-en-scene.
In this clip, the utilization of long takes in conjunction with overhead angles after the mother is stabbed creates a sense of unease within the audience as we are forced to observe the vulnerable condition of the mother and her child as their stolen food is ravaged. The unstable camera movement only further enforces the hectic nature of the film. Because of Mizuguchi's subtle portrayal of apparitions, many dispute whether the horror component of the film comes from the supernatural or from the mise-en-scene of the story itself. In the case of Mizuguchi's mise-en-scene, it may seem far-fetched, as to many, Ugetsu is advertised as a ghost story, and on the surface, storylines such as the aristocratic ghost lady in some way fit the Western standard of ghost tales. However, as seen in the scene breakdown, Mizuguchi is not concerned with creating horror through make-believe, and instead emphasizes the horror of reality these characters live. Even the ghosts who haunt other characters, such as the ghost of the aristocratic lady and the mother at the very end, are motivated by struggles presented to them in their waking life. The ghost lady lost her husband when she was alive, leaving her vulnerable, as men in Japanese society are often the breadwinners of the household. In an attempt to not only evade loneliness, but maintain her luxurious lifestyle, she seduces the potter and convinces him to marry her. The idea that success always comes at a cost is depicted again in the parallel storyline between the brother who dreams of becoming a samurai and his wife. The horror of the situation is presented to us in the confrontation between the wife and her husband after he becomes a famous samurai and she, left to her own devices, is forced into prostitution in order to survive. This confrontation horrifies because of how realistic it is. The realism of this dynamic is the true horror and does not rely on the supernatural. This does not, however, diminish the pivotal role the spirits occupy in the film. The blurred line between reality and spirituality is presented within the settings depicted as hellish landscapes. Death and despair are at every corner, especially with the raging war and ceaseless raids that have destroyed villages and split up families. This is only exaggerated by the ending, where the husband, instead of being held accountable for his actions throughout the story, is absolved of wrongdoing by his forgiving wife, who manifests into a ghost in order to assist him upon everyone's return to the village. In choosing to represent the ghost in such drastically different ways, Mizuguchi depicts the hardships of the husband's journey as paranormal intervention in his plans to achieve wealth.